What's going on, family? Yep, yep, yep. Back at Illinois Motors. Listen, <sighs> last video I brought you guys a really, really cool video, but I thought it was a real cool video on a couple of old trucks, man, that, that, that introduced some real cool power. That Chevy SS, we had that Ford Lightning. But now, man, I think we're gonna dive into uh, some of the modern power that, we, that trucks are giving us these days. Got two more for you guys. Think you're gonna like them. Yeah. I have some apologizing to do. What's up, man? Last video, I was like, man, it's kind of weird how Dodge has kind of just, your Ford and Chevy have just let Dodge take over. Right. And I somehow don't know how I just completely glanced over right. a truck that's dominated the performance Gosh. segment. But you got to forgive me because this is not the same as the other trucks that we saw. Correct. And there's a big, there's a big difference. It's a different type of performance. Those trucks were street performance. Yes. And they all existed in off of affordable trucks. Right. So regular uh, cab, regular cab trucks, yep. like single cab trucks. Yep. So here's the difference. The market shifted. Yep. The trucks became more expensive. Yep. Almost seemingly overnight after Ram, Stuffed a Viper V10 in their, you know, their psychotic truck, and then and then made a crew cab and put an automatic in it, which is just crazy. Correct. Yeah, that was the only car you could get an automatic transmission paired to a V10 from Dodge. That was the only one because Vipers never came automatic. You're absolutely right. So, here is the thing. Another very good fun fact too. We talked about those trucks. We talked about the street trucks. Yep. But things did get more expensive, and things upscaled. Yeah. And I also think what Dodge did with the Ram is kind of impossible to match because to this day, the Ram, the Viper SRT10, the Ram SRT10 is the fastest truck in the world still. Right. It has the highest top speed because everything else has gotten really heavy. Yep. And not only has it gotten really heavy, our dynamics are affected by that. Yep. They're higher up. They're not as low to the ground. That is a street truck through and through. I don't think there will ever be a faster truck unless someone is willing to take it there. Because all of these trucks are usually top speed limited and they have off-road tires and they have off-road suspension setups. So we have completely ditched the street truck. I have a feeling it will come back. Street trucks will make a comeback because we are on, we are on the horizon of another emissions 
yeah, issue. With the, especially yeah. with the lightning electric right. truck, I think that probably, I think they it's can telling. modify it, mm -hmm. you know, back down to something that's more streetable or street truck. That would be pretty cool if they put a light, a Ford Lightning powertrain in like a sing, like a regular. Uh, that would be crazy. A single cab. Like that would be crazy. F one fifty. Yeah. That would be like a legit Lightning successor. Yep. So everyone's mad that they use the Lightning name for an electric truck. Exactly. But it's like it's brilliant marketing. <laughs> right. Why wouldn't yeah. you? Not only so, that, but when you think about to your point, that shift from the sport truck market that we had mm -hmm. went to a different direction. The trucks became more off-road and more utilitarian as opposed to just being a street truck. Now we got these trucks that have make crazy power, but they also have big tires. They're lifted. They got off-road suspension. These things are borderline. This is a borderline Baja truck um, from the factory. Make so, crazy power. Still makes crazy power. However, it is no longer just... A street truck. It's an off-road vehicle. Yes, sir. It's crazy. Here's the thing about the Ford F-150 Raptor, SVT Raptor is this one. This is a Gen 1 Raptor. The difference, though, is that the very first Raptor actually didn't come with, or it didn't, it, there was two engine options, yep. which most people don't remember. There was a one-year-only option for the standard 5.4 liter three valve truck motor, which I do not recommend. Right. Um, honestly, I don't recommend it. And the 6.2 liter. Anyways, this is a Gen 1 Raptor. This one actually has 71,000 miles and it's finished in extremely rare color. Yeah. This is a really rare color. Mm. I, I don't know if it's like extreme, extreme rare, but I've personally never seen one in this color. Ever. No, this, this is, is the first one I've seen this in this is color. This is called Terrain. Yeah. And Ford's got an interesting naming scheme for a lot of their colors. So this one's got some addictive desert designs bumpers um, at same sort of front and rear. It's got some different lights. Um, but this truck has 71,000 miles. The chassis is in pretty good shape. Uh, it's a clean Carfax. And they still pull and hold money like and value. Yeah, well, yeah, crazy, absolutely. You know? Especially when, although they're just coming back with it. Right, right. They took the V8 out of the Rapture and they put yeah. the uh, the twin turbo V6 exactly the uh, eco motor in there. Technically and, a more efficient engine. It's, yeah, but you can't. It knock. made it made great power. Yeah, but it did not have the sound. Yeah, it didn't have the sound. This is another thing that ties into this color is the badging. See, it has the terrain on the badge. Pretty cool. That's actually just the reflection of the paint on. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like the terrain paint code was on. Oh, the... no, no. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, fair enough. He's you sleepy. Got me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Mountain Dew hadn't kicked no, in yet. No, no. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to write him a pass. Look, all right. So, anyways, back on We're going to keep it brief. So, this one's pretty cool because of the color and the fact that it's a 6.2 boss motor. It's just cool. Like, yeah. These are super desirable and sought after. Um, just because of the fact that they are the last standard production V8 Raptor. Yep. That was the, you know, they're not, the, the truck itself is not rare. They made a lot of them over the time period. Correct. But, um, you know, there is a cult following for the V8 ones. Big time. And some people are not too happy with the EcoBoost ones. Yeah. And some cases of EcoBoost Raptors, even though every, all the ones we've had have been fine, you can have some cam phaser issues, but that mm. other than cam phaser issues, the EcoBoost that. is a really stout motor. It is. Like, it it really is a good motor. Yeah. Motor. You can get a lot of power. Mm -hmm. You can build on that motor mm -hmm. from the factory and get more out of it. They take a lot. They take a lot. That motor exactly. actually can handle a lot. It just doesn't carry the sound. Yep. That's the only difference. I agree. I actually like the styling of this. I agree. I think it looks cool. Yeah, so do I. It looks really cool. So do I. But here's the nice thing. 71,000 miles may seem kind of high for, you know, I think we're asking 40,000 bucks for this truck. Um, maybe a little less now or a little more. Don't remember the specifics. The point is, though, is rare color. These trucks hold their value very well. To be honest with you, you could put an extra 70,000 miles on this truck and probably only see another $7,000 in depreciation. Yeah, I agree. It's They're going to be around for a long time, at least this this will have a big, because of that coat following, mm -hmm. there's going to be a desire for this truck for a very long time, mm -hmm. right? Um, Absolutely. And people drive them, um, and they take these things off-road. These, mm -hmm. these trucks are stout, and they come with suspension that will blow your mind, front and rear. And if you've ever seen any video of what the Rapture able to do from the factory, 
This is not a. This is not something you can sleep on. This is a real. This is a, a serious truck. It's it's cool. I mean, I always had. I had a lot of respect for these because I rode in the back and went on uh, Crown Rally. This was a. I didn't have a media vehicle, so I got put in the back for Raptor, and I was like, oh my god, this thing's actually sick. In corner, pretty good yeah. too for a truck with soft springs. Yeah. Um, I was pretty impressed by that, but um, so pretty See much. See somebody get a tire off the ground, cutting and get that one tire off the ground through the turn. Yeah. This thing actually can yeah. move, man. Yeah. So these are they, they were a smash hit from start to end. I mean, they you know they sold a lot of them, and what's kind of funny is a lot of them is still only five to ten percent of the truck market yeah. though, because the regular truck market of fleet trucks and regular F one fifties and yep. crew cabs and platinums and king ranches yep. and blah blah blah. This is still a small segment, but what's crazy. It's as a small segment, but the F-150 is one of the most sold trucks in the world. Absolutely. So you think about like a 5 to 10%, that's like 50,000 trucks. Yeah, I know. Still, that's crazy. because they're selling almost a million units a year, yes. I think. Yeah, Ford is killing it's, the game right now. Right. I mean, Ford trucks has always been the top seller of trucks. Mm -hmm. um, they, with this car, with this vehicle here, they took a different segment of the market, right, with off-road off vehicles. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I believe it was the shift that when you see a lot of these dealerships that take them and they started putting their own um, like high desert package on them, these off-road packages on vehicles and then selling those those vehicles off separately, mm -hmm. which is actually a, a great marketing plan because lifted trucks get love and people love them. I love lifted trucks. I wouldn't mind having one myself. So um not only that, but, you know, there's really not a whole lot that you can't do with a lifted truck other than bring it into a small garage. Mm -hmm. That's true. You can drive so it kind of... in all weathers. You name it. You can yeah. take it off road. You can use it for whatever you want. You can tow with it. You still do everything else with it. And, and that's just... what makes this so much more successful as a marketing strategy yeah. to the street truck because the street truck is cool as it is and it's awesome i love it i wish it would come back yeah these are more usable yeah way you more can usable. take them places right street trucks have low profile tires yeah. and street suspension yeah and like this is it's not the same so the off-road truck market it's crazier than ever yeah. i mean you have the comebacks of like legends like the bronco and the new bronco is sick i really do like the new bronco it's it's the shift that with trucks and you look at, you know, back in the day, even some of the uh, older trucks, they had a, um, how can I put it, like ranch use. Like it, they were all like, they all advertised being taken off road and driving on these dirt roads and, you know, hauling hay, whatever, ranch type feel, truck stigma. Whereas modern day trucks become daily drivers. You see them in the city and they do other things, right? which I think grew the street truck into a whole nother category. But as we move forward, these trucks became, you know, they started doing more. Well, I'll tell you what happened. They just got really expensive. Yeah. So when something gets really expensive, guess what it has to do? Yeah, it's got to do more. Everything. Yeah, it's got to do, do more. everything. Yeah. And these trucks, these Raptors, they do even everything. the new Raptors, <laughs> they, do they do everything. Yeah, they really I do. agree. They're awesome. Yeah. I really do love these. I've but always what's kind of interesting it. is Ford, for some reason, um, you know, whenever they, they – without Ford, that's why I'm happy. Without Ford and without Dodge, we wouldn't have certain responses right. from, from Ford. Without, I would agree. Without the Raptor, we wouldn't have things like – You wouldn't have the response from, from – oh, well, actually, Chevy also, however. But you wouldn't have the, the response from Chevy and from Dodge. Unfortunately, Chevy won't play ball, though. Nah. They haven't made a response, which is a shame. I think they could totally do it. They they have not made a real response. Not a right. real response. No, no. no. I agree. Not a real response. They've had some marketing gimmicks. And yeah. Things like that. And yeah. This has got the electronic side steps and overall in really good shape inside. It's oh god, this leather dash is beautiful. It's like a faux leather. <laughs> yeah. Still nice looking. Yeah. This is a. Uh... It's in good shape inside. Really like, good shape. This is a clean truck, for man. For 71,000 miles, it's pretty good. But to your point, just as you say, not too many people had an answer for this truck. No, it was hard to. I mean, suspension, they were just way ahead of the game. And, you know, budget. I mean, you're talking about Ford. Ford's the only company, you know, American car manufacturer that hasn't had a, you know, a bailout from the company. So to so. your point, <laughs> who do you think brought the best response to this truck? The only response. 
<laughs> we'll take a look at that in a second. Y'all ready? <laughs> Are y'all ready for the response? Let's take a look at the response. response <laughs> and that was kind of my point is the raptor i love this truck <laughs> i love this truck it's super cool oh really really cool i love like, this truck ridiculously cool so yeah. this is the response to nearly a decade of off-road truck dominance yeah and this kind of a truck only exists to provoke and poke the bear and I think it's really, really cool that this even exists because yeah. without, I'll be honest, without this truck, Ford would not have made a Raptor R with a V8. True. It just would not have happened. It would never happen. It always takes someone to push Ford to have a response, Both right? To bear. So this truck is the response. It is a 2021 Ram TRX. It's got the Hellcat motor. 702 horsepower and 650 torque. Slightly re uh, uh, restricted air flow system because they want to protect the system from sand. So 702 is more like 735 yeah. because they, Hellcats make like 740. At the yeah. Track. So um, it's still a fast truck. I love that exhaust. Man. And even on the street, this is a ridiculously fast truck. It's a high, I think it's a high 11 second truck. Yeah. They said it would only run a they, – they were totally sandbagging on the numbers. They're like, oh, it'll run like a 12.4, and it runs like an 11.8. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I could – yeah, once again, I think I think that's right. But uh, This exhaust, I love those big tips. Yes, sir. They're just – they look massive, man. It's a little dirty right now, so um, we're filming this slightly early. Yeah. Uh, this car got caught in some rain, and it kind of, you know, how rain can ruin a yeah, good wash. Yeah, especially the black pieces. <laughs> the satin parts, Yeah, it's very hard to tell there's anything on it, but you can see a little bit on it. But it doesn't take away from what you guys are seeing. I can honestly say oh, yeah. that. I think this thing is just awesome. This is an awesome truck, man. So Sounds amazing. What do you think? You like the color? Colors. I like the color. The color's phenomenal. So this is hydro blue. Yeah. Hydro blue pearl. But it has a satin PPF, so it's oh. this is supposed to be that like gloss blue. Yeah, I was gonna do that to my car, yeah, to, yeah. to the three hundred. I was mm -hmm. gonna do a satin white on top of it. Yeah, uh, PPF. This is cool. Yeah, so it is paint and paint PPF PPF to be matte, and I think it it really really fits the look. I think it, I think it looks, looks great. great. Yeah, yeah, I think it looks great. Yeah. This so, thing looks beefy, man. This is not a normal TRX though. So. How do you make a TRX not normal? You make it, you lift it up higher. You lift it higher. You change. You put bigger bumpers. tires on. It. You put bigger tires. You do a different suspension. Bumpers. You throw some lights on it. Yeah. You put PPF on it. What else can you do to make it special? 
you can take it down to a little place in Texas uh -oh. where they'll turn things up a little bit. Jeez. This is a Hennessy Mammoth 1000 package oh TRX. My so this God. makes 1000 horsepower at the crank, seven uh, high 700s at all four wheels. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I haven't ever driven a TRX yet. I've driven a lot of other trucks and things, but I've never driven a TRX. So I would love to drive it because, you know, I'm Mopar biased. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing is with this truck is I'm just glad it exists yeah. because it really shouldn't have. And this was that middle finger that took Ford to make that Raptor R. And I just think it's really special for that. Yeah, I think um, that's a very good point. It's, it's the one thing to say, hey, look, it's time to do something different there, Ford. Uh, We've uh we're shaking it up. Mm -hmm. That little six that you got out there, mm -hmm. not good enough anymore. Right. And those ten speed Raptor R's are faster uh, than these from a roll, but from a dig, they're actually really close. Stock. Yeah. Stock for stock, they're close. But this would leave a stock Raptor R for dead. Come on, man. Because it's, it's Hennessy. Hennessy. Yeah. Sheesh. So the cool thing about Hennessy, and Hennessy gets some slack for you know their prices on their performance things. Yeah, Here's but the, they, they're back. They're proven. Here's the thing. God. This is the real reason you buy Hennessy. You do Hennessy warranties. Yeah. Especially yeah. when it's unproven, because they're usually first to market with a lot of big modifications. Yeah, they're but they want a lot of risk. Yeah, they warrant the so, crap. They, you, if there's anything that you're going to get done there, they're going to make sure you're straight. Based on when this He's was pay done, for it, but... based on when this uh, Hennessy 1000 package was installed, um, I think they only made 150 uh, mammoths. This is like technically wow. one of like 150. But the the point is with this truck is you've got a three year 36,000 mile warranty. That's the part right but, there. But it all depends on when this is, this was done, and we have that paperwork. I just don't know it off the top of my gotcha, head. Gotcha. Gotcha. Worst case scenario, this thing's got a year and a year and a half left. But you have a ton of miles to play with too. So. <sighs> Um, you can do all that, and it's just badass. It just looks sick. That tent is ridiculous. That's another yeah. thing I love. I love, I love yeah. those windows. Are. It's kind of interesting. The This is a big-ass truck. <laughs> like, it is huge. Massive. Like, it, it doesn't really, it's like... It's massive. All those photos and stuff and the videos, like, it, it doesn't do anything. Oh it doesn't do it justice. God, this thing is clean on the inside. This is... But, Oh, no, yeah. this is like really, really clean. Like, yeah. ooh, it smells so good. Dodge oh, and leather. this thing is hard Dodge loaded. Leather. This is a super, super duper loaded TRX. This is, has something called the. T this has got it's got the wheel mount for the spare, um, but it also has something. It's called the TRX Equipment Group Level Two, which is like huge, it's, dude. It's like a seventy five hundred dollar option, and it's Equipment Group to load this thing out. Are you serious? It's loaded. Like it's loaded, loaded. It's it really, really nice. So this is the regular color, right? Without the PPF Correct. film on it. And it's nice. This thing is so clean. And you even got your yeah. hand, your hand look, mammoth. What's you it? still got your tag on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that earlier. <laughs> we just talked about that. But you got your Hennessy mammoth labeled on the truck or on the seats. You got it on the carbon fiber there. Right there. Nice How many truck. miles is on this truck? 7,000. Jeez. I think that's it. This is very impressive. So Ram Bar is an option. It's got that level two equipment group. It's got the, the wheel mount. It's got everything, man. Like literally. This thing is super impressive. Mm -hmm. And the doors are just nice. My friend Paul had a Ram Rebel. And I had driven some trucks. In I that. like Rebels. I like Rebels. I drove his Rebel. And it was actually in the same color or slightly different color. It was like more like an indigo blue like that up there, the Challenger. Mm -hmm. That was, I thought it was one of the nicest trucks I've driven, was the regular Rebel. Like you wouldn't think it, but it really drove nice. So add 700 horsepower in a Rebel and it's probably way better. So I like Rebels. The Rebels are nice. I actually yeah. looked at Rebels. Because this is um, technically a Rebel. Yeah. That's technically yeah. what the body style yep. is. That's all they did. They took the Rebel and they... Threw that big motor in it. Mm -hmm. That's what tall guy started with. He started with a Rebel, mm -hmm. and then he ended up getting the uh, TRX when it came out, when they put the big motor in it. Mm -hmm. This thing is so nice, man. Yeah, I got to sit in this one. Go for it. And no you getting on the ground. Up. You can start it up, too. 
Man, look how nice it is in here, guys. If I can find the key. <laughs> <laughs> it might be in it. It's my, it might not be also. Yep, it is. It is? Okay, perfect. Look how nice it is. Big screen. Turn that thing on, man. You <laughs> might turn it on. <laughs> Seventy one hundred miles. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. So from the factory, I think these are limited to like a hundred and twelve miles an hour because of the tire tread. Yeah. After that speed belt, it will literally start to disintegrate. Start tearing up the the, the wheels. So I don't know tires, who did what, and it definitely wasn't on these tires because these tires are in good shape. Yeah. But this car specifically <laughs> has a data log of what speed this truck has actually achieved. So someone has the limiter pulled. Yeah, uh, you know, Dodge does that. Dodge allows yeah. you to see all speeds. Yeah. yeah. This thing is so crazy. You know what top speed this truck's seen? 148 miles an hour. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. In a truck? A 6,000-pound truck. <laughs> you think this happened at Hennessy? Uh, no, I don't think they have the space for it. It's a big truck. So someone enjoyed it. This is, by the way, this is a one-owner truck. Oh so God, bro. Yeah. See? <laughs> See, the, the, the speedometer only goes to 120. Yeah. It'll keep trucking, though, if you have that limiter pulled, of course. Oh, my God. She is so nice, bro. We got a, and you got a, you got got a roof big too. roof. You got the panoramic roof, yeah. Man, I like this truck. <laughs> I like this a lot. Oh, I can't afford this, though. Not <laughs> Me neither. The, not in the truck form. Me neither. Not in the truck form. How much do we want for this truck? We're asking one twenty nine one twenty nine eight for this truck. So That's MS actually not bad. MSRP on this truck is huge. Like it's a big window. I think it's ninety eight. With so the spec. Loaded. Plus the Hennessy it's package, the Hennessy, and it still has and warranty. has warranty. It still has warranty for the the Hennessy work. Yeah, this this is a uh, that's actually not that bad for this truck. Not bad at all for this truck. It's In a this lot market, of value. that's a lot. No, it's that's actually pretty good. It's low miles. It's a clean example. It's a one owner truck. It's a nice truck. You know. I want to rev it, but it's still cold. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to hurt the motor. It's not even in my nature. But it's super clean, guys. I mean, when I tell you, man, if this is what you're looking for, come and get it. Because I'm going to tell you, you you're you not going to find this option out there, a lot of it at all, honestly. And right now, to be honest with you, TRXs are over 100 grand by themselves. A lot of them are, especially the, like, ignition edition. Yeah. Like the yellow ones. Yeah. Uh, I think that's called what's what it's called. I could be completely wrong. They're over hundred grand by themselves. So imagine, you know, then going to Hennessy and getting that package put on it. Expensive. It's gonna be through the roof, man. Through the roof. Yeah. And this vehicle will hold its value for a very, very, very long time. This is definitely gonna be like a raptor kind of scenario. Because yeah. these are gonna always be desirable. And this this powertrain's tried and true. It's very reliable. Yeah, very, very much so. I mean, you see what these guys do with Hellcat. Oh, my and God. Motors. Right. They literally. <laughs> this thing has a Hellcat motor, and it can handle it. Plus, yeah. no, not plus. It has a Hellcat motor that's been touched by Hennessy. It's a 1,000 horsepower truck. Hennessy's not going to put it on it if there's a part of it that will break by using their package. So it's got to be able to handle it. Everything, is, everything has been put to the test, so you know this thing is going to hold it. This thing is awesome. And it's got everything, like everything. The only thing it's missing is screens, like in the back seats. That's it. I don't think it's an option on this truck. Therefore, it's not missing anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. She's nice, man. Let's shut it down. Sheesh. This here is something nice. <laughs> so oh. Two different size cup holders. Oh, yeah. And that's just in the door. That's just wild. But so here's the funny thing about these trucks. So even the thousand horsepower, we're on a dip we're just in a different age now where electric trucks are coming becoming a thing and they're yeah. just 
ridiculously fast for yeah. that effort, you know? Yeah. And that end might end up being part of the death of the off-road performance truck is the electronic, the electric truck. Oh, wow. I never even thought if about that. If you think that. about it. So, you know, to experience stuff so like heavy. this. So heavy. Yeah. And because these are not light either. No. No, they're not light. They're but light. imagine it's, having the batteries to lug this big thing around. You're going to add what? But you'll have a better center of gravity because it's all low. It's like They're, the Hummer, right? Yep, yep. They all have like a, a skateboard chassis, basically, yeah. where all the batteries and the motors yeah. sit really low. And that battery pack is 4,000 pounds? I don't know if I'd go that far. It's three to 4,000 pounds. Just with looking at Stratman, he had to go get his batteries replaced. Well, that might, that might what, in this Hummer? Mm -hmm. The whole battery well, that, pack. That Hummer is obscenely heavy. This, it's, this is 6,000 pounds. This makes this look like a Lotus Elise. Yeah, so the Hummer battery I pack, I want to say, is three to 4,000 pounds. That's just the battery. And the, the chassis and the truck itself. It, I think it, I don't remember what a Hummer EV weighs. I don't know what it weighs. The Hummer EVs are fast Probably 7,000 yeah. 7, pounds. I would say over 8,000 yeah. pounds. Pretty sure. Minimum but, seven, but yeah. So, what do you think? What would be your choice? Would you have a Raptor R? Would you have a TRX? TRX all day. You think? TRX really? all day. Yeah. I will go TR. Well, no. Really? Let's back up. This TRX with the Hennessy package yeah. all day long. Stock for stock. Stock for stock. I'm on the fence because I haven't seen it. I haven't really dug into the uh, the, uh, the Raptor R. Raptor yet. R yet. Mm -hmm. I like the I like the styling. I like the eights. You mm -hmm. know, it's got the eights on that. Let you know it's got an eight cylinder yeah, yeah. now. Um, but I haven't really looked into how different they are right right off the cuff i i, I probably go trx just off the cuff because i just i just something about this truck that is impressive to me mopar they just do swagger man yeah man that's just what they do it's just impressive to yeah. me so if i had to pick right off the cuff it would be ram i think i agree with you yeah. i i just dude something about this motor I know. It's ridiculous. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. And that, I know. Predator, that Predator V8 and that Raptor and the GT500 is no joke. I mean, it's ridiculous. The yeah. power capabilities. Something about, though, about a big, bassy, ridiculous push rod V8 with a blower is just cool. It's special, you know? bro. Yeah. It's so special. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, I have to agree. So, I don't know where the performance truck world goes from here. Yeah. I mean, if I had a crystal ball, I would probably say that it's probably going to lean heavily towards electric trucks. I mean, yeah. Rivian's killing the game. Rivian right? is killing the game. Lordstown, we'll fixed. see what happens with Lordstown. Yeah. That's kind of like a weird thing. Most people don't even know about that Right, company. right, right, yeah. Um, and their truck that came out, I'm not too sure on the styling, to be honest with you. It's very funky. But Rivian's killing the game. Ford's got the Lightning. Chevy's coming out with an EV truck. Ram's yeah. even coming out with an Ram's EV truck. Ram's coming out with an EV truck. Um, which... <laughs> And Dodge, man. Ram, you know they have like a, you know how the Rivian has like a passageway. Yeah. You know what Ram calls theirs on their concept EV truck? Pass hole. <laughs> oh Your pass hole is huge. <laughs> and that, that's probably the most Dodge thing of all time to call it that because you know that's a crude company. And they but make, when you when yeah. you think about, like you said, the performance, one thing that uh, one thing I can tell you as we close this out is that the EVs give you like crazy torque. For sure. So you got these vehicles that can launch. They also, EVs give you tons of weight, mm -hmm. which is the other side of what an EV gives you, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can see getting some really cool street trucks out of those EVs that For launch sure. and go. The Rivian is one. The Rivian launch is a, mo a monster, mm -hmm. right? So that's one of those vehicles I can see that will give us, a, a, bring us back to a new age of street trucks. Mm -hmm. um, For sure. The part that I think we will miss. The sound. Is the, off, the sound and the off-road trucks. So I but think those trucks that, are extremely capable off-road too. Yeah, but they're not this capable off-road. But here's the thing. All it takes is one trim. Rivian, if Rivian can go off-road well, and it hasn't even had a special trim yet. Who do you think would put the first one out there? The first performance trim truck? Yes. Well, the, the, the company with the most foundation, I think Ford's out there with their Lightning. You know, I, I, it's you hard to say. It? 
Ram will not be first. They're not even to no. the market yet with a standard truck. No, I don't think it's going to be. A co I mean, technically, the first should have been Tesla with a Cybertruck, right? I'm gonna be honest with you. I would love to see somebody not even just go straight EV, mm -hmm. but go hybrid, plug-in hybrid. Oh, man, that's that's hard. I think I'd rather just have either all yeah. gas or all electric. I would love to see one you that gives you both. How heavy that would be with battery packs and motors and an engine and a big ass truck. It would be cool. Don't get me wrong. And there already you is might have trucks. crazy range. Now, we have a hybrid truck here right now. We have a hybrid F-150. We have a 21 or 22. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't think it's here right now. I think it's down the street. But the point is, is I don't have a crystal ball. But what I do know is trucks like this are not long for this world with a no. supercharged V8. Trucks have different emissions regulations, though, as we discussed in the, yes. first, truck, yes. or the first truck video. So this actually might be kicking around longer than the Hellcat word on the street. Absolutely. Because they can actually still produce Hellcat engines and put them in these trucks. Yes. So for people to freak out and buy up all the Hellcat motors, it's like, oh, last call, dude, you'll be able to still get the engines. Yeah, and I think that'll grow even outside of that, you know, from them going to even putting the Hellifin in this and being able to get a, even more of a monster. They, they would have to put the C, the whatever engine they have in the new Demon, because the... Yeah. the, the uh, the Demon 170? Yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah, right? 170. Um, so it's, oh, yeah, the engine C170. That's yeah. It. So if that, it's for the Hellfin is 85 not, octane, putting the uh, E85, E85. It's the first flex fuel Hemi from the right. factory. And that's why they got the 170 is. is 170 proof. That's the 170 alcohol. proof. Yeah. It's like alcohol. 85% mm -hmm. alcohol is 170 proof. Exactly. So. I don't know. It would be awesome if they stuffed that engine in this truck. Because yeah. then it would just kill the Raptor R, and that would be it. <laughs> that would just be it. And I love that, because the con I think what the world needs a little bit of is competition. Yeah, it makes man. things better. Yeah, man. Because you ever, then you, you, without competition, you find stagnation. 100%. Without pushing the envelope, without having someone else push the envelope, mm -hmm. no one would want to achieve the next best thing. Mm -hmm. right? So pushing the envelope allows us to continue to grow and that's what, not just with these car makers, that's with us as well. And it's not competition, but when you know that there's some other level that you can achieve based on what else is out there, push for it, go for it. I mean, be it education, be it business, be it vehicles, your personal wealth, your personal growth, credit, you name it. Always push for the next thing because it allows you to be better, <laughs> better later. Not only that, but it also gives you new goals to push for. 100%. This is a big goal. For a lot it's of people, a this is like a dream goal. truck. You know, it is mean? a dream truck. And I'm it's... dreaming about it right now. <laughs> exactly. God. I think um, I'm not a truck guy, but I think if I were to have a truck, it'd probably be a TRX. I'm a truck guy, yeah. and I like HD trucks. I love those two HD trucks over there. Mm -hmm. um, if I was to get a truck, I believe that I would prefer getting an HD over this. However, prices are way different. Way different. Yeah. Not only that, but functionality is way different. You know, I mean, fuel but I would buy this for fuel economy, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it's with, with a thousand horsepower. I think the MPG is like six. Yeah, it's gonna be ridiculous, yeah. right? So, although they stand about the same height, right? Mm -hmm. um, the stance is different because of the wheel. There's so many different factors that that makes these two different. But I really do, really mm -hmm. do like this truck. I do. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, it's man. only a matter of time before we get a Raptor R, and then we'll have to complete the saga that, yeah, until we I get, like, I, a Rivian or something. Right, yeah, 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 and, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's the crossover, right? That is the crossover. 100%. When, when a Rivian falls here, we definitely going to be here to review it. We had a Rivian, but you didn't know it worked here yet. <laughs> uh, I got a guy I know has a Rivian. Yeah. So maybe, I can, maybe I can link up with him and see if we can. For I, sure. We was, I was supposed to review his truck last year. Mm-hmm. And never got a chance to, but yeah, yeah we'll, yes, we'll try to catch up with him. Absolutely. But yeah, man, I think, uh, I think you guys got the gist of it, man, at least from where we are now, right? So there's still more to come because I think with EVs, that gives us more options, right? Even with the hybrid that you, you guys have, mm -hmm. it's more options, right? So there is no better time to be an enthusiast than now the options are insane you ridiculous go, you can go old you yep. can go semi-modern you <laughs> yeah. can go brand new there's yeah. options for everybody yeah. 
like sports cars, off-road vehicles, like you name it. And all of them are at pinnacle status right now, if you think about it. This is an off-road vehicle that isn't a sluggish, just a regular sluggish V8. This is a supercharged, thousand horsepower monster that isn't a built, oh, not built, let me not say built. Yeah. That isn't like a pro truck. This is not a pro truck that's giving you this crazy power. That you can take off road, you can man and run this thing and have a great time in the desert. This is a really cool truck. Absolutely, and I just think it's important to know that you know what year it is. It's 2023, and in 2024, a lot of this stuff's going away. Yes, all the Hellcats and stuff gone. Scat packs gone. Yeah. Uh, Camaro. Very interesting time. Camaro gone. <laughs> Camaro gone. Yeah. A lot of the other turbocharged sports cars will live on for a little bit. Yeah. But all the naturally aspirated big V8s and and supercharged engines and a lot of <sighs> even turbocharged stuff is even going away because even that stuff is not going to pass emissions anymore. Yeah. So I think it's just important to know that this is a time that will never be repeated again. This is this feels like 1969 or 1970. Yeah. We're at a turning point. Yeah. What happens next year? We don't know. We don't know. We'll see. We shall see. We shall see. We'll be around for it, and it doesn't change. Just at, even then, they thought the car automobile will never be the same in a bad way, but they didn't realize how it grew things like that, like this, right, like that. Hey, man, like that guy over there. By the way, that's the real super truck right there. That's the super truck. <laughs> <laughs> that big Merc motor in it, man. Listen, and this is not your average truck right here. Sheesh. And neither is this. And neither is this. And man. neither is that. And neither is that one. <laughs> Listen, these two guys brought something to the market that shifted what we and how we looked at these trucks. Again, we went from these street trucks that were low to the ground, tire smoking, big motor monsters that couldn't do nothing but that. Then we grew into vehicles like this, that big motor <laughs> lifted. They can go off-road effortlessly and down the track effortlessly, jumping sand dunes and doing real cool stuff and still can haul, tow, and do all the other things that that guy was able to do, right? And then we got things like this, that took it to the next level, 1,000 horsepower, supercharged, lifted, off-road vehicle, power of a pro truck that can be literally a daily driver. If you can handle that six miles per gallon. <laughs> Listen, man, this is not average. And just being able to go through this history and discuss these things, come on, man. Like Tim said, man, we're living in a very interesting time right now. And I'm honored and blessed to be able to see the transition, right? You can't beat it, man. Knowing what we have now, I'm kind of excited to see where we go. We'll see. Who knows? We can't say it's going to be worse. We don't know if it's going to be worse. Because right now, we think what we have is phenomenal, even after what happened in the early 70s. Think about it. <laughs> Come on, man. We are in a different time. But listen, man, we're still dealing with these vehicles that are not average. This is not an average vehicle. This is a monster. This is a beast. That guy over there, monster and a beast in his own right, right? For a fraction of the price. For a fraction of the, of the price. TRX. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Come on, guys. Y'all know what we do, man. We're at Illinois Motors, but we never do it average, man. Why is that, man? Because we were designed from greatness. Because we were designed for greatness, guys, you have the right the responsibility, the authority to never be average. So guys, don't be average. Yeah.